Hi, and welcome back to our lecture series on sustainable finance. Now, in this video, we'll talk more about sustainable development and how it is related to sustainable finance and financial markets in general. In the last video, we've already talked a little bit about the different challenges that Earth faces. And we've seen that obviously in a world with limited natural resources and a growing population and a growing economy, uh, we will get to some forms of planetary boundaries. For example, um, we have uh, to keep the planet livable for current and future generations, um, but we need to think more about how to use natural resources, how um, large the budget for pollution is, for example. And on this slide here, you can see uh, some aspects of these planetary boundaries. For example, when it comes to climate change, um, on this slide, um, it's actually um, marked as yellow, um, as in a zone of uncertainty. So we have an increasing risk. Uh, it might actually be turning red right now uh, when it comes to um, biosphere integrity, genetic diversity. Uh, it's actually beyond the zone of uncertainty. We have a high risk that we are losing uh, species, we are losing biodiversity. Uh, same with uh, phosphorus and nitrogen um, in the ocean acid acidification, meaning that actually uh, the levels of uh, acidic um, um, substances in the oceans are increasing and uh, the acidity of the ocean uh, is actually happening. Um, and there are different aspects like for example stratospheric ozone depletion uh, where actually it's below boundary. Um, we have had the ozone uh, hole and uh, problems with the ozone layer back in the 80s and 90s. Um, we've um, challenged this problem and we've addressed this problem in the past and now it seems that uh, the ozone depletion has been uh, reversed but nevertheless uh, this has been uh, and this was a big concern back in the 80s and 90s. Now, nowadays this is no longer such a threat as for example climate change. So uh, just to see that there are different aspects um, that we need to address and not just think about climate uh, change, although many problems are of course related to climate change. For example, biodiversity loss is directly related to uh, the increasing temperature of our atmosphere. Now, the climate policy gap that you can see here is probably well known by now that uh, we have certain um, projections um, for uh, the warming of the earth and uh, we should probably um, get to a baseline of almost 5 degrees Celsius increase if we were to do nothing. Uh, this is obviously uh, completely uh, detrimental to mankind but uh, current policies try to address climate uh, change by um, keeping it to a level of maybe 3 to 3.5 uh, degrees Celsius. In the optimistic policy, we might be able to um, curb it to a 3 degrees Celsius increase. Um, we are trying to get it to 2, uh, two degrees, um, but uh, this is obviously very, very optimistic and needs drastic change uh, immediately. So climate action is urgent, it's necessary now. If you think about the different steps uh, we've taken so far um, as uh, uh, the world, as mankind, we started in 1992 with the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro, uh, where we've already uh, identified climate change as the biggest risk to mankind and to um, nature itself. Uh, we've had the Paris Climate Agreement in 2015, but uh, to be honest, there is still too little action. We might need a carbon tax, we might need more drastic um, uh, policies to get to that 1.5 or maybe 2 degrees Celsius uh, goal that we've set ourselves. Now, as I mentioned in a previous video, the United Nations put forward the Sustainable Development Goals and they are listed here and you can see uh, they have um, very nice uh, logos and emblems. Um, and 
Many of these are of course related to climate change, but not all. In some cases actually uh, they are indirectly related to climate change, um, as for example if you take zero hunger and no poverty, it's obvious that climate change uh, will lead to more droughts, it will lead to um, lower agricultural production and more production losses due to, for example, climate, uh, extreme climate events. So poverty and hunger will follow um, after climate change. But of course climate change um, is the more serious problem maybe and the one we can address immediately because it also leads to different problems but also hunger and poverty are problems on their own so for example there are of course certain aspects of hunger and poverty that are caused uh, not just by climate change but actually uh, by uh, governments themselves and um, even some um, negative adverse effects of capitalism. Now we also have good health and well-being, quality education that's actually not related to climate change, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, industry, innovation and infrastructure, reduced inequalities, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production leading to a circular economy, climate action, life below water, life on land, peace, justice and strong institutions, and partnerships for the goals. So these are the SDGs of the United Nations. Now the aim is of course to keep the planet livable um, and life should be uh, nice for everyone. Um, so the main goal of course of the SDGs is to tackle climate change and environmental concerns because many of the other things will also follow. Um, we know that human activities are affecting the earth system. We know that we are responsible for climate change, for pollution, etc. We know our planet has boundaries, it has a certain capacity when it comes to natural resources, population and probably also economic growth and we need um, to define these boundaries and to keep our um, economies within these boundaries. Now the framework is based on the intrinsic biophysical processes that regulate the stability of the Earth system on a planetary scale. And you need to keep this in mind uh, when talking especially about the environmental SDGs. So basically these are climate action, we need to take urgent action to combat climate change, we need to ensure the availability and the sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. Again, this is also affected by climate change. There are um, interrelations between the two, but of course sanitation is something uh, that uh, needed to be addressed well before um, climate change took place. Life below water means we need to conserve and sustainably use the ocean, seas and marine resources for sustainable development we shouldn't overfish oceans, we shouldn't pollute oceans and of course again with climate change we should be aware of the fact that climate change will lead to uh, an increasing temperature in the ocean that will lead to loss of biodiversity, that will lead to loss of marine habitats like for example uh, coral seas. Um, corals in the marine oceans are affected by increasing temperatures and last but not least, life on earth, uh, life on land, sorry. Uh, we need to protect, restore and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, sustainably manage forests, soils, combat desertification, hoard and reverse land degradation, the destruction of the rainforest and hoard biodiversity loss. Now, you've seen in the Sustainable Development Goals that we talk a lot about environmental challenges, but we also have social foundations and social foundation challenges in the SDGs. Now this is good from um, a policy standpoint, it's a little bit bad from the standpoint that we need to work, be able to work with this in finance. What do I mean? Well, um, we are actually combining a lot of things in what we call sustainability, sustainable management. We are combining environmental concerns, social concerns, political concerns even, and this 
makes it sometimes harder to choose the right instruments and uh, the right metrics. We talked about social foundations. Um, we've seen that um, actually we have uh, several um, social priorities uh, in the SDGs and they can be grouped into three cr clusters basically. Um, people should be well through food security, adequate income, improved water sanitation, housing, healthcare. They should be productive through education, decent work, modern energy services, and they should have a voice and peace and justice empowered through networks, gender equality, social equity, and having a political voice in peace and justice. Now, sustainable development combines the concept of planetary boundaries with a complementary concept of social foundations or boundaries. And this means that current and future generations have the resources necessary, such as food, water, healthcare and energy, without stressing the processes within the Earth system. However, many people are still living below the social foundations of no hunger, no poverty, access to education and access to clean cooking facilities. And of course, it's interrelated. It's connected to each other because if you are poor, if you are, um, have bad sanitation, if you don't have any water and if you don't have energy, um, climate change, you are affected by climate change, but you also have no means uh, to do your part to counter climate change. Um, you cannot switch to a Tesla if you don't have the money to buy a car, if you don't have the work and the employment uh, to buy food in the first place. So this is a problem. Now, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development places decent work for all people at the heart of policies for sustainable and inclusive growth and development. The decent work has several dimensions. For example, it starts with a basic living wage. It continues with no discrimination, no child labor, and last but not least, health and safety and freedom of association in the workplace. So from a societal perspective, it is important for businesses to respect these social foundations and to ban underpayment and uh, human rights violations. Now, to many countries this might seem a little bit outdated because some of these things are actually um, problems that we encountered in the 19th century. But of course, if you look at other countries in the world, um, they don't need to be developed. Actually, we have developed countries where you still have slavery, where you have uh, bad working conditions, where you have no health and safety in the workplace, and you don't have gender race uh, equality. So these are things that still need to be addressed in the 21st century. So these are the societal goals, end poverty, end hunger, ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages, and ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all, achieve gender equality, empower women and girls, ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable and modern energy, make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. Also something that is, of course, becoming more and more important um, during times of climate change when especially cities become hotter and hotter and uh, need to be uh, rebuilt to some extent uh, to uh, accommodate for the fact that uh, cities are usually hotter or it is hotter in cities than it is on the land. And last but not least, promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development. We also have economic growth, decent work and economic growth. So it is not that the sustainable development goals promote degrowth. They support and promote sustainable growth because with growth comes innovation, with growth comes more efficiency and this is um, the way of understanding we have here in the sustainable development goals. Not degrowth but sustainable growth. We should build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and we should foster innovation, reduce inequality and have a responsible consumption and move to a circular economy. So this is the global strategy by the United Nations. You can see it's the economy at the top. It's uh, something that comes probably last. 
society and the biosphere that affects everyone. And last but not least, the 17th goal is partnerships for the goals. We should strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. Um, the sustainable development goals already hint at something that we will encounter um, in many places during this lecture, which is ESG, Environment, Society, Governance. You might have heard about this, the ESG uh, index, um, ESG investing. Uh, ESG is just an abbreviation for environment, society, governance, and it means that you measure a company's sustainability, a company's uh, or an investment's um, a contribution to a sustainable development and sustainable economy by looking at its footprint on the environment, how it affects society, and how the company is governed and how it is um, um, integrated into a governance structures. So all of these sustainable development goals are of course related to ESG um, components of an index, to ESG aspects of a company. For example, if as a company you're working and you're contributing to fight poverty, then you have uh, achieved something in the S uh, dimension of ESG. If you're contributing to zero hunger, good health and well-being, again, you are a social company. You are contributing to um, the sustainable development goals. If you don't pollute the environment, if you do your part in reducing carbon dioxide emissions, then of course you are uh, doing well in the E component of ESG and so on. So all of these sustainable development goals have um, a representation in the ESG um, um, dimension of companies. Um, and you can see this on this slide. Again, life below water, life on land, that's environmental. Uh, peace, justice and strong institutions, it's both governance of the company and societal aspects uh, of its contribution to society and um, this is quite interesting and we'll see this on and on again during the whole lecture, uh, ESG. Now, sustainable development, as I mentioned, uh, the United Na Nations developed the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development to guide the transition towards a more sustainable and inclusive economy. And the 17 uh, SDGs stimulate action over this period between 2015, the Paris Agreement, and 2030 in areas of critical importance for humanity and the planet. And to facilitate the implementation, these high-level goals are actually specified in 169 low-level targets. We are not going into detail here, but actually um, those high-level goals um, are more detailed, are more laid out in more detail in these 169 targets of the Agenda for Sustainable Development. So they are classified to the level, again, of the economy, the society and the environment, and they are all interrelated. Okay, what are the five principles of sustainable development? It's comprehensiveness, connectivity, equity, prudence, and security, just so that you've heard about this. Okay, so this is a short introduction to the Sustainable Development Goals. This is basically a framework we will be uh, using throughout the lecture. Um, you've seen we've already encountered ESG as a very important principle in sustainable finance. And so in the next video, we'll start talking about the financial system.